Hello, my name is Roger Watson. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Advanced Nursing, the Editor of Nursing Open, and I'm an Editorial Board Member of the Wiki Journal of Medicine. I want to talk to you in this session about writing the discussion section for a manuscript. I do many writing for publication workshops around the world, and a very common problem that people have, and a very common question I get, is about writing the discussion section. Specifically, People ask me, how do I start writing a discussion section? Or how do I write one? What do I put into the discussion? What goes in there? These kind of questions are very common. Now I'm assuming that people have read many discussion sections and articles that are published, but for some reason the principles of writing a discussion section don't seem to, to rub off on them. Having said that, I would urge people who are writing articles to read discussion sections in the journal that they're hoping to publish in to see what others have done, to see what's acceptable, and to try to learn from that. However, people do seem to have a problem starting writing a discussion section. And I'm going to share with you my formula for doing it, my strategy for doing it. And my strategy for writing a discussion section is always to do it in specific sections and to do it in a particular way. And my way of doing it is to write in the heading, discussion, and then to put a couple of subheadings in, one limitations and one conclusions, just in case you forget those. Then put in a few page breaks to move those down to the bottom, because you'll come to those later. So to start the discussion section, the best thing to do is to restate the aim of the study, or indeed to restate the research question in the discussion, in the first few lines. You don't have to do it verbatim, you can reword it slightly if you want. But it's a good idea to remind people what the study was about right at the beginning of the discussion. So start off by saying, this study set out to investigate something. So start off by saying that. And that covers the first few lines. It gets you going and it gives you some direction and it tells people what the study was about. Again, you will already have done this in the abstract and in the introduction and possibly at the end of the background. But it's always a good strategy to tell people what you're going to do, tell them that you're doing it, and then to remind them again. And the discussion is a good place to remind them again. So having reminded people what the aim of the study was, my next strategy is then to list the main findings. So for example, you may have had three main research findings. Just say after you've restated the aim of the study, the findings from the study were as follows, one, two, and three. Or bullet point them, and then use those um, research uh, questions or th those answers to the research questions, use those findings as subheadings for the rest of the discussion. Put those in as subheadings and discuss each of those findings uh, separately. And here you'll want to refer back to the literature that was in the introduction. Remember that the literature may not be mutually exclusive. Some bits of literature may apply to more than one of the findings. You may even want to introduce some new literature here. But at least having this structure gives you a way of getting going and knowing what you're doing with your discussion. And really, that's, that's all you have to do. Um, so write a brief restatement of what you're going to do state the main findings, use those uh, main findings as subheadings under which to discuss the uh, findings of the study. Then you may want to do a section at the end of that bringing it all together, or you may want to leave that to the conclusion section. But you should remember also to put in some limitations of the study. Every study has limitations, and it's much better to do this under a specific subheading limitations. Then you can write your conclusion, and your conclusion should be something along the lines of, again, uh, not necessarily restating what the study set out to do, but summarizing the main findings and stating what the implications of those findings were, perhaps for further research or for clinical practice or for policy, and then possibly stating some future line of inquiry. And really, that's one way, at least, of making a start to a discussion. I think if you've got a strategy like that in mind, you won't sit and face an empty, empty blank uh, computer screen or a, or a page for too long. It'll give you a way of getting going. 
So just to recap, it's a common problem, I find, uh, that people don't know how to start writing a discussion section. I recommend restating the aims or the research question, stating the main findings, using the main findings as, as subheadings under which to discuss those findings, summarise that in a brief paragraph at the end, state some limitations and then write your conclusions and your conclusions should reflect back on the study and restating what the implications of the study are for research or policy and pointing to a future direction for research. I hope you found that useful. Thank you very much for listening.